Hello everyone, my name is Danielle and I'm coming to you from Jackie's Lodges in Madikwe Game Reserve in South Africa. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to use depth of field to your advantage, how you can control it to make your images look much more professional and make it pop. So let's get into it. It's a question that my guests often ask me. How do you make the image look so professional? How do you blur the background? How do you make your subject pop? How do you separate your animal from its background? All of those questions has to do with depth of field. There's various ways of making an image pop, but depth of field is definitely one of them. And there's various ways that you can control depth of field to use it to your advantage. Now what is depth of field? Depth of field is the distance between where your focus starts in an image and where your focus ends. So when you focus on the animal, say on the animal's eye, you'll see focus um, trailing off in front and focus trailing off behind. And the distance between the sharp focus where it starts and where it ends behind the subject, that is your depth of field. And you want to control that to get more professional looking images. There's four ways which I'm going to mention, which you can use to control your depth of field. You won't necessarily be using all four every time on the same subject. You'll use a combination of them. That usually works best. So the first way to control your depth of field and to blur your background, as it's, as it's commonly um, said, is by decreasing the distance between yourself and your subject. So by going closer to something, by going closer to the animal, you decrease your depth of field and you get a nice blurry background and foreground. Don't forget about the foreground. The foreground is often used as a blur um, to lead your eye into the, into the image. So if you can go closer and it's safe, so you can drive closer if you're on a game drive, you can walk closer if you're on foot. In Botswana we're on boats and we drift into the sighting to get a bit closer. If it's possible and if your, if your composition allows, then get closer to your subject and you'll blur your background more, you'll decrease your depth of field more. The second way of, of controlling your depth of field is by decreasing the distance between the subject and its background. So how do you do that if you can't move the elephant closer to you and further from its background? Well, you can change your angle if it's possible. So if you have a choice between shooting um, the animal from this angle and there's a tree behi right behind it, or if you have a choice of moving your angle and there's a distant background that's further away, then choose the, the distant background to isolate your subject more from its background. Obviously, you have to look at your lighting as well. You have to decide, is it still going to fit in with the lighting that I'm, that I'm getting on the, on the animal or on the subject? So if your lighting still agrees and you don't have to compromise um, on the lighting, then change your angle slightly and choose a background that's further away. And that'll make the background blur more. This is often why we shoot low. Um, because when you're shooting from above into an animal, into the ground, down on an animal then you're shooting into the ground behind it and the background is very close the ground is very close if you go low you're shooting along the water you're shooting along the ground um, and it's it's often much better to get that distant trailing off effect of the the background blur as an example for the background that's that's further away from the subject this is a good example we arrived at these bee eaters and beautifully you know they were beautifully positioned flying around sitting on this the stick um, but unfortunately the the background was quite close the bank behind them was just too close even stopping down on the f-stop we still unfortunately had a a background that was in focus and and not separating the subject well from from the the background so eventually we asked the guide can we please get off we were in namibia so we could get off um, the boat and walk around and eventually we walked around and the light still allowed us to get a beautiful image from the side with the the shooting along the bank actually using the bank as a leading you know leading your eye into the subject and getting that beautiful distant background blurring perfectly behind the bee eaters as an example of the background being close or far away this this monitor the rock monitor we shot from the vehicle so we had no choice to shoot down on it because it was quite close to us so the angle was quite an extreme angle that we shot at a high angle and we were shooting right into the ground behind it the light was good so i took the shot but it just demonstrates the difference between having the background close to it like in this example where you can't really isolate it well against the background versus this example where the monitor it's a different monitor it's a water monitor 
the monitor is shot at eye level so we were on the boat here and we could all go down onto the side of, shoot from the side of the boat and shoot along the ground making the background causing the background to be further away from the subject which resulted in a beautiful background blur which results in isolating the subject really well against the background the third way to control your depth of field is by using a longer focal length so use a bigger zoom or choose a lens with a bigger zoom that's basically what it comes down to the longer your focal length the shallower your depth of field will be so if you zoom in with your zoom lens you'll get a more blurred background and foreground um, or if you choose to use a lens with a longer focal length a bigger zoom then you'll also get a decreased depth of field right so have a look over here the first shot was taken at 200 millimeter focal length so we were sitting, we didn't change our position, we didn't change focus, I didn't change f-stop or anything. The only difference between this shot and the next shot is the focal length. So keep your eye on the background and you'll see this was the background at 200 millimeters. And in this next shot, it was taken at 420 millimeters. And you'll see that the background blurs much more. So that's because I'm at a longer focal length. Yes, the lens has a little bit of an effect on it, true. Um, but the focal length is what I want to demonstrate here. A longer focal length will give you a shallower depth of field compared to a shorter focal length. So that's the difference. Same scene, same aperture, same distance from the, from the little lion cups and that's the difference that you get um, in your image. Blurred background with a longer focal length and a less of a blurred background with the, with the shorter focal length. So decide which one you want. If you want it to pop more, then use the, the longer focal length if it fits the situation that you're in. The last way of controlling your, your depth of field is by aperture. So that's the obvious way, is by going down on your f-stop, by going down on your f-number, you are increasing your aperture and therefore you are decreasing your depth of field. So if you are shooting with a background and it's too busy, then just stop down from say f8 to f5.6 or f4 if you want a nice blurry background and foreground. And that's a nice way of isolating your subject against its background. So those are the four ways of controlling depth of field and using it to your advantage to get more professional looking images. Um, don't use all four at the same time. It's, it's not often that you'll use all four at the same time, maybe at some point. Um, but just keep them in mind and use them where, where appropriate. I hope you found that tutorial to be helpful in controlling your depth of field and popping your subject out from the background. Um, please remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notifications about when our next videos are available to watch. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.